Our focal point for the second quarter remains on Syria. This is where the Syrian civil war, the European migrant crisis, Turkey's existential crisis with the Kurds, the frozen conflict in Ukraine, and Russia's standoff with the West all intersect in a very sticky web of geopolitical conflict. And if anyone can turn a source of conflict into a source of leverage, it's Russia. Over the past quarter, Moscow demonstrated that it has the influence to both escalate and tamp down the level of violence in Syria, much like it can in eastern Ukraine. So Russia will spend the next three months preparing for a very big month in July, when the Europeans are due for a vote on Russian sanctions and when NATO members meet over plans to expand the Western Security Alliance's footprint on Russia's western flank. Now, Russia has drawn down its forces in Syria to shape those negotiations with the West, but it has not withdrawn its forces either. Russia will maintain levers and strategic theaters as it tries to shape its negotiation with the West, and after showing Europe the stick in the first quarter by exacerbating the Syrian conflict, Moscow can now hold out the carrot through peace talks in Syria to try and divide the Europeans on sanctions and on NATO's build-up plans in Europe. The challenge that Moscow faces is that even those Europeans that are more amenable to easing economic pressure on Russia, like Italy, Greece, Hungary, they would rather use the threat of breaking a European consensus on Russia's compliance with Minsk to bargain with Brussels for leniency on budget deficits, aid, bailout terms, bad bank deals, and the like. As we said in the annual forecast, the Islamic State's capabilities in its core territory of Syria and Iraq will be degraded this year. But that actually heightens the terrorist threat in other places, including Turkey and Europe. The Islamic State threat, along with the migrant issue, will compound the EU's existential crisis. Turkey can also be expected to leverage the migrant crisis this quarter. Ankara has little intention of taking hundreds of thousands of migrants off Europe's hands, but it will take advantage of European desperation to extract a variety of concessions. But the concession that Turkey needs most is coalition support for a military move into northern Syria. That's where Kurdish militant forces have steadily expanded their territorial control with the help from Russia. But with Russia maintaining its footprint in Syria, Turkey will not find the coalition allies it needs to make that move and will need to compensate in other ways to bolster rebels in northern Syria. Now, while there is ample room for negotiation in this array of conflict in Eurasia, this is not a quarter where we are likely to see major breakthroughs. The Europeans will not get a viable deal to manage the migrant crisis. Ceasefire attempts in Syria will be limited in the end. Russia is unlikely to break a European vote on sanctions. Turkey is unlikely to get the support it needs to make a big push into northern Syria. And the government in Kiev is more likely to collapse than make political concessions in eastern Ukraine to satisfy Russia. The global economy will not see much relief either this quarter. As the dollar strengthens, more strain is put on the Chinese yuan and more uncertainties then feed back into the global economy, ensuring that the Fed's tightening cycle will occur at a gradual pace. The European Central Bank's monetary policy will help tamp down any flare-ups in the Eurozone, though the British pound will be under heavy pressure in the lead-up to the Brexit referendum on June 23rd. We believe the referendum will likely result in a vote to remain in the Union, but even then, the UK still has a big trade deficit problem weighing down the pound. More Iranian oil on the market means continued oversupply for the second quarter. Do not expect Iran to coordinate a cut or freeze to production. The political pressure on Rouhani is high to deliver economic benefits from the nuclear deal, and Iran is not going to put itself at a disadvantage. Saudi Arabia and its Gulf allies will meanwhile watch and wait for the market to correct itself later in the year as U.S. production levels come down. Now, this is just a snapshot of what we expect in the next three months, so please be sure to check out the full second quarter forecast when it publishes on Monday, March 28th.